Hey everyone, it's Justin here. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to cover the major incident workbench that got a UI lift in San Diego. And I'll try to point out some cool things that I think are neat about major incident management. If you haven't used it already, major incidents are like when things go really bad, right? So when that happens, you need a place to kind of swarm, gather different tasks, see well what's going on, get that bird's eye view. Um, a major incident is usually a pretty big deal. People put up war rooms, stuff like that. And uh, the major incident workbench kind of gives your incident manager and the team a place to kind of do all that stuff within ServiceNow. So let's jump to it. I'm going to open up this uh, cleverly titled uh, major incident here from Able Tutor called System is Down. Uh, very descriptive there. I'm sure as they were working through this, they uh, defined which system was actually down. But I'll go ahead and open up typical incident form here. You, you know, you can change this, make it look however you want. But you get to the workbench using this view workbench button here at the top. So we can go up there and it's going to take us to the workbench. And this is what got the UI refresh in San Diego. Um, not much different functionality, so that's not changed. But I'll just point out some things. We can change the state. Um, so if you're the incident manager, you can come in here and actually manage that directly from here. Um, these little, uh, they look like filters up at the top. What they truly are is hyperlinks down below. So there's a lot going on in this dashboard. Um, I'll just scroll so you can see it all. Lots of these little widget panels where the incident manager can come and do things. But by coming up and clicking on impacted services, it'll jump me down um, to that particular widget. And if I wanted to add a new service to that one and say, hey, this is not just rewards processing that's impacted. Um, we want to add something else uh, to that particular one. It'll pull up and let me select from a list of uh, impacted services or configuration items, also known as CIs in the system. And I can go ahead and just check a box there and select those and add it to uh, my list there. So now I have three impacted services. Isn't that funny? Look at that demo fail. I added them. We can see the number, but they didn't show up. Um, let's see if there's actually a refresh button here. So let's do a refresh. And uh, look at that, they showed up, so that's cool. What else do we got there? We got manage and then view recent outages uh, for those particular ones. But uh, again, I'll just point out up here up above my head, three child incidents, I'll click on that and it'll take me down to those three child incidents. Scrolling back up, there is this um, communication or the group, sorry, it's just above my head, um, active and on call. So it's nobody to actively assign to this yet, but let's look at on call, we can select a group who's on call for, uh, let's see, network team, and then we can see who's primary and secondary for the network team directly from here. Now, the powerful part here is communication, right? So we've got our communication tasks. Um, we can add a communication uh, plan or a task to this and do things like automate around email, Microsoft Teams notifications, Slack notifications, set the frequency of them uh, when they're due. Um, and kind of manage that and manage the recipients for those communications, right? You might communicate differently with different audiences as part of major incidents. So we can manage all that from this communicate tab and then manage and track all the tasks that are happening for that one. Same with the collaborate. So collaborative communication tasks, we could do the same thing there. Um, from this major incident workbench. That's pretty much it. Got a nice little UI refresh. Um, still love the idea of having a place to sit and manage a major incident and not be just looking at a form and a bunch of child tickets associated with it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one.